Welcome to uh, today's episode of Boat Fools. Um, as they say in sailboat racing, I went on a bit of a flyer today. Um, my wife says that if you want a new dog, particularly a Labrador, uh, just throw a tennis ball out your back door and you'll have one in about five seconds. Uh, similarly, if I see a sailboat, I gotta stop and take a look at it. It's, it's the laws of attraction, I have to do it. I love boats. Um, and so I was driving to the post office today and went by our local Y and there were five sailboats in their dooryard. And I recall that uh, every year uh, they have a sailboat auction. Um, people donate their boats and the proceeds from these sales of these boats uh, go toward uh, various programs of the Y. Um, so I called the Y and sure enough, they're having the auction this May 20th of 2023. And uh, these boats that I went and looked at are all available. Um, but uh, as a disclaimer, I have, I have no affiliation with these boats or the Y or stand to gain in any way from this. I just was curious about these boats because a couple of them caught my eye. I saw a J24 and a couple others that looked um, like they were uh, designed by designers I knew. So um, I had to stop. I had to look. And sure enough, there were some sweet deals in there. Um, and I don't think one of them was more than $6,500. And the least expensive, I think, was like $2,500. And all of them look like with a little elbow grease and effort, you could have a nice, nice boat, uh, particularly a day sailor or a weekender or around the buoy racer. Um, but if you want to get on the water, and that's what we're all about here at Boat Fools is getting out on the water. These boats would do the trick. I believe they're all trailerable. Um, so if you are from away, I bet you could get involved with the auction um, and bid remotely. Um, but I'll put the information in the comments uh, section and description below. Uh, so you can get more information on this auction. It's a pretty cool thing. And I, and I, I su suspect there'll be more boats coming into that, that yard uh, in the coming months uh, before May. So I'll keep an eye out for other sweet deals. But uh, there are some humdingers in there. And I would, I would be psyched if I were in the market for in an inexpensive way uh, to get out on the water. The, one of these might do the trick. Um, so uh, I'm taking off on vacation tomorrow, February 15th, which will probably be today when this uh, video airs. And then uh, the following week, we'll be back to uh, boat projects on our Morgan 38. So uh, please stay tuned. Please subscribe. Please click like. Please share with friends uh, who might be interested. Um, as I'll note uh, later on and in other videos that uh, we're just getting started here. We have a lot of fun stuff coming up. So um, please tag along with us and please subscribe and uh, let's get going. So I'm going to switch over to some video that I took today, uh, February 15th, 2023 of these uh, five sailboats and uh, go over the, some of the sailboat data, uh, .com information on each of them and show you some pictures and video. And, and uh, I'd be curious to know which one you would buy. Uh, they're, they're cool boats. So um, write in the comments, uh, which one you would take if you were in the market to, market to buy a small uh, 25 foot boat or a smaller boat. Um, I think it'd be fun. All right, so let's go. Okay, hey everybody. So every year the Camden Rockport a YMCA has a boat auction where boats are donated and proceeds uh, go toward programs at the YMCA. Uh, so I just was driving by and I saw these and I was like, hey, let's check these out because I am a boat fool and I love boats. So um, just going down the, the list here, we've got an Allied Greenwich 24 footer asking price is $2,500. I'll take some stills of these and uh, we can look at the sailboat data for these uh, back at the uh, home office. Next, we've got a nice uh, Catalina 25. Asking price is $2,750. That's $2,750. It's 1974. Um, oh, hey, this is a nice looking boat. This is a Cape Dory 25. Asking price is uh, $5,200. It's 1976. Um, that looks like a nice boat. Um, no apparent damage. Looks pretty solid. Uh, we'll take a look at the back sides of these when I go around. Uh, here we have a uh, sort of a classic uh, Tanzer 24. Um, Blonde Ambition, asking price is 5,900 bucks. Looks like it's a 1984. But boy, that Cape Dory, she's a stunner. Uh, this looks like it might be a mystery boat. It's under plastic and no apparent signage on it. Uh, so we don't know what that one is. And I don't know if I can see up under the bow. Let's see if I can get a cove stripe. Uh, can't tell. 
Uh, last but not least, we've got a, uh, looks like a nice early model, number, hole number 15, J24. That'd be great for around the buoy racing and some day sales, maybe an overnight. Uh, name of this boat is Blueberry Jam. Fun name. Uh, but anyway, kind of cool. I bet more will show up. Um, I don't even know when this auction is, so we'll have to uh, do a little research on that. I can post up that information. Um, all look to be in decent shape, a little elbow grease. You could fix some of these up. Um, I wish I knew what this one was. Uh, but boy, that Cape Dory looks like it's got a nice Garmin on there uh, for some electronics. Classic, uh, classic boat, beautiful lines from Stonington. Um, nice little boat. And Catalina looks to be in decent shape too. Again, no apparent damage, just some, needs some elbow grease and you could have yourself a nice little boat. And I forget what this one was again, but we'll go around, but this one needs probably the most work out of the group, but uh, not, not a, a bad looking boat. It'd be a great day sailor, it looks like. Maybe an overnighter. Um, but we'll do a little deep dive on these because they're kind of cool. All right. Okay, so this is the, uh, the Cape Dory 25, which was my sort of uh, favorite of the group that I saw at the YMCA today. Uh, here's a still shot of her, and then I'm going to slide over the, um, the saildata.com information on her. So she was built in 1976, according to this plate on the hull uh, data plate. And so this is the Cape Dory 25, and um, just a slick little boat. Um, she was really pretty. Uh, pretty lines, classic Cape Dory lines. Um, you get a full keel, rudder on keel. Uh, it looks like you've got a head, a galley, uh, one, two, three, four uh, sleeping quarters here. So you could definitely do an overnight with some friends. And she's going to be pretty steady. Uh, she's nearly 25 feet overall, uh, 18 feet along the water. A draft of three feet, um, 4,000 pound displacement. Um, sail area displacement is 16.8, so she's going to be a fun little boat to sail. Uh, last built in 1982, 845 of these were built. So there's going to be a great community of Cape Dory 25ers out there um, to uh, correspond with and, and go over things with um, if one were to buy this boat and had questions about it. Um, sail area displacement, uh, this, uh, I'm sorry, the S factor here is 1.68, so a uh, little underpowered maybe, but she'll be she'll be quick and nimble. Um, uh, balance displacement, uh, 42.5, which means she's going to be a nice stiff uh, boat. And comfort ratio is 22. She's got a uh, pretty long overhang with that almost 25 feet on the uh, overall and then uh, 18 feet on the water. So she might hobby horse a little bit, but what a terrific uh, day sailor. Um, and I just, I can't say enough about these Cape Dories, and I think someone could have a lot of fun with this for the price that they're asking. Um, so let's let's uh, take a look at the next one, but this would be, this is my fan favorite of the group that we looked at. Uh, again, I'll show you a photograph of her, a nice still shot. Um, and I, and uh, yeah, that's about it for this one. Let's go on to the next one. Actually, before we move on, I forgot to look at the Cape Dory uh, data plate. And for $5,200, uh, what this is listed for, uh, it seems like you're getting a pretty sweet deal. Uh, it's got a um, Honda six horsepower outboard uh, last serviced in 2020. Um, and you get a main cylinder working jib. You also get uh, Ford cabin cushions that were recovered in, in the top side, bright work all new in 2017. Um, You've got uh, a Garmin and solar panel electrical system installed in 2018. And uh, so it seems like a lot has been done to this. It just, it seems like a pretty smoking deal. Anyway, um, that's it on this one. Okay, so this is the uh, Catalina 25. And um, not in bad shape. It looked like she needed a little elbow grease up top here along the coach roof. Um, but it looks like the original gel coat uh, just needs some waxing and buffing to get the oxidation out. Uh, maybe paint the bottom. We have no idea what the interiors look like on any of these boats. But um, I did look at the uh, data plate that was on the side of the boat, and it's pretty, it's pretty compelling, I have to say. Um, 
first built in 1974, which I can't confirm on sailboat uh, data. Uh, it says the first one of the Catalina 25s was built in 1978. So maybe this is four years newer than it says here. List price is $2750. Uh, it's got an outboard Suzuki six horsepower. Um, it says three jibs, however, no mainsail because it blew out two years ago. Um, it's got a VHF, uh, Japsco Marine head and nice cushions. The description says uh, this Catalina 25 fixed keel with a great little cabin, very tidy with like new cushions. There is a 1980s Suzuki mounted six horsepower outboard. It has no mainsail because it blew out two years ago. There is a there is a working jib in Genoa sail. Uh, so I think, you know, with just a little bit of uh, effort and a little bit of money, um, you could get a nice, a really nice boat here. I mean, it's uh, $2,750, right? And your mainsail is going to cost you a few grand, probably, either through precision sales or a local sail maker like Bondell. Um, and uh, maybe less than that. I'm not really sure, so don't quote me on that. But um, it could be a nice little boat with a little investment. Uh, so looking at the sailboat data spec sheet on this boat, um, this is what she would look like uh, with her rig. Um, stern hung rudder. Uh, this one is the full steel keel. It's not a swing keel. Two interior layout options. I don't know which one this is, but it looks like at the minimum would sleep four. You've got a head... Uh, a sink in the head, which is nice, uh, and a little galley. And uh, this one's got a dinette table, uh, as does this. Um, but this is a dinette setup. Uh, but I bet that table lowers down. You have more sleeping area there. Um, but a nice little boat. 20 feet, I'm sorry, 25 feet overall. Um, 22 along the water. So pretty good um, waterline to overall length uh, ratio there. Um, only a three feet differential. Um, Sail area displacement is just under 16, so um, not going to be the fastest boat in light air. Um, last built in 1984, and this is the kicker, nearly 6,000 of these built. That's astonishing. Um, balance displacement ratio, a uh, ballast displacement, excuse me, is uh, 41. It's a nice stiff boat. Comfort ratio 19, a little low, but that's probably because of uh, the fin keel. And the S factor is 2.72, so she's going to be pretty quick, I think. Capsizing screening formula under two, so that's nice. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, this is interesting. Under the notes here, the most popular sailboat in this size range ever built in the U.S. Dimensions shown here are for the standard rig pre-1988. Uh, so I think there's going to be a good um, community of Catalina 25 owners out there. And overall, just a just a nice little boat. Um, and for that money, uh, it seems like you could really have a slick weekender uh, around the buoy racer and uh, a nice sturdy boat. So uh, let's check out let's check out the next one. But that one, I actually um, I'm rather impressed by. I wasn't expecting to be, but um, it seems like a pretty nice boat. Okay, next up is the Allied Greenwich 24, and it took me a minute to find this because it's not under Allied Greenwich, it's just under Greenwich 24. And funnily enough, uh, it looked vaguely familiar to me, so I looked at the designer, and George Stottle, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, he designed not only this boat, but the Cape Dory 25, which we just looked at, and uh, probably best known for designing the uh, Shannon 38, um, another beautiful boat. But... Um, so this has got a good pedigree, and I don't know anything about it other than what I'm reading with you now, uh, but it does look uh, vaguely familiar uh, relative to the Cape Dory 25. She was in pretty rough shape. It looked like she'd been painted at some point, uh, all gripped, and so it's not the original gel coat. The coach roof just looks like it needs some elbow grease. Um, but uh, let's take a look. Uh, listed at $2,500. Uh, yeah, you can see some crazing in the, in the paint there. Probably just needs to be sanded and really uh, painted well. Um, built in 1971, um, and let's see, 24 over, overall length. Uh, let's see, it's got a main, a working jib, a spinnaker, and a furler. Uh, rigging is serviceable. Um, equipment includes navigation lights and cockpit cushions. There is no motor. Has a Ritchie compass and a, a unit and depth sounder. Uh, this full keel Allied Greenwich 24 sloop has main storm jib and roller jib made by Brad Hunter. Equipment includes a depth sound and navigation lights and cockpit cushions. There's no motor. Okay, so um, we'll take a look at this again in the video. Uh, 
um, or as you saw in the video, it, it was in pretty rough shape. But again, it's got all the working parts other than a motor. So an out, you could get an outboard probably for a few thousand dollars, maybe use one for less. Um, strip it down, paint it, or sand it and paint it, and you could have a nice classic little boat here, um, especially with that pedigree of um, the designer who did the Cape Dory. So um, this is the sailboat data page. Again, nice lines, classic little sloop, full keel, rudder on keel. Uh, no head it doesn't look like. Uh, oh, actually, it says head under here, so it's probably uh, just a little uh, efficiency head there. Um, and one, two, three, four berths. 24 and a quarter overall, 17 on the, on the water line, so about a seven foot differential there. Beam is a little less than eight feet. Um, sail area displacement of 16.73, she'll be pretty quick. Built from 1968 to 1972. Allied Boat Company, there's the designer, George Stadel, Stadel. Um Let's see, comfort ratio of 20, almost 22. Um, Speed factor, S factor of 1.56, and capsizing under two. Yeah, all good stats here. Uh, 15 gallons of water she holds. You could overnight on this uh, with a with a partner, or, uh, wife, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend. Who knows? You could do a lot with this. Some day sailing uh, and have some fun. Um, in 1972, the design was sold to the Cape Dory Company and then became the Cape Dory 25 with new deck and coach roof. Ah. Well, that explains everything uh, based on what we've just learned. So, uh, nice little boat. And here it is under Spinnaker, um, and it looks like it's a fun little ride there. All right, so let's, uh, let's move on to the next. So moving down the line, we came to the Tanzer, which is labeled here as a Tanzer 24. In fact, uh, after a little research, it's a Tanzer 22. And when I looked in at the data plate on the hull here, it, it said the same. So it's the Tanzer 22. Um, don't know a lot about these boats. It's, it's definitely a, a unique looking boat. And I, I like the fact that the coach roof comes right out to the rail, which means you're just going to have more headroom down below on a smaller boat like this. Um, so uh, this is um, in pretty good shape. It looks like it's the original gel coat. It just looks like it needs a good clean. And uh, let's take a look at the, the data plate. It listed at nearly 6,000. I would say I would go well below that. But um, to try to pick it up, but it, but it could be in really nice shape down below, and what we learn here might explain why it's listed so high. But um, it says it's built 1984, tiller. Uh, it's going to be uh, hung, uh, rudder hung on the transom um, here with the tiller. It's got a Nissan four horsepower outboard. Uh, it's just serviced in 2020. It's gas. Uh, it's got a fresh water tank. Um, Let's see, uh, jib needs to be re -sewn and furling fixed, okay? Uh, rigging is in good condition. All safety equipment registered, uh, required by the Coast Guard on board and included new battery. It's 1984 Tanzer with a Nissan four-stroke, four, four horsepower motor, which was last serviced in June 20, 2020. The owner said it has always started right up and runs well. The hull appears in fine shape and was used very little in the 2021 season. She is equipped with a single sideband radio, the SSB. She's got a Garmin sounder and a compass. The cockpit is complete with all cushions, two pipers, and a forward V-berth in the main salon. You got a sink and ice box, all appear in good shape. The main and Genoa sails are in good condition. The jib needs to be re sewn and the roller furling fixed. She also has a gin pole, but no spinnaker. Okay, so sounds like it might be pretty nice down below. Um, and it may be worth a look. And it's a little bit shorter than the other boats uh, listed here uh, or that we've looked at, but it could be a great little weekender. Um, sail area displacement uh, looks pretty interesting there at 17.75. Um, it can be a stiff boat. We're going to see that. And a ballast of 1,200, uh, max draft of three and a half feet. So you could really get in close to a beach. A length overall of 22 feet, length along the water of 19, so a good, good uh, length of water line ratio there. Beam of nearly 8 feet. Um, sail area displacement, like we said, 17.75. Comfort ratio of 14, it's not going to be the most comfortable ride, but uh, capsizing screening just over 2, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty nimble, quick boat. Um, surprises me based on the look of her, but... Uh, I guess if you get a new jib and whatnot, she'll be well powered and, and fun to uh, fun to sail. So, um, the Tanzer 22 was the most popular of all the Tanzer models. Most were constructed in uh, Canada and Quebec. 
Um, but so we're produced in Edenton, North Carolina, 270 boats. Uh, how many boats were built overall? Where did I, did I miss that? Whoa, 2,271. So a very popular model. Um, let's see, the Tanzer went out of, uh, after Tanzer went out of business in 1986, the tooling was acquired by Kisburn Co., and the, which built the Tanzer models for about a year before selling to the Canadian yacht builders, which never built any. At some point, the Tanzer 22 class association acquired the design, tooling the name of the boat by selling shares to members, but it's unknown if any more have ever been built since. Uh, the rare variant, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it sounds like there's a, a great community of Tanzer um, sailors out there. So this could be an interesting buy. Um, I kind of dig the look. I got to say, it's kind of uh, kind of definitely a 70s look to it. And it looks like it might go pretty well. Um, so uh, that would be worth a closer look if you're interested in a 22-foot uh, day sailor weekender kind of sloop. Uh, you could actually probably do some racing in too. All right, let's uh, let's move on. So I reckon most of you are familiar with the J24. This was a huge one design class, extremely popular in the 80s. Even I raced on some of these, and they are a fun boat to sail. Um, I was mistaken. This is not hull number 15. This is the auction number. So that was ridiculous. But uh, asking price is 6,500. Um, highest, I believe, in the bunch, maybe. I can't remember. But in any event, um, let's look at the data sheet on this one. Um, let's see if there's anything interesting. Uh, the J24 is fun to sail and was created for the diverse needs of recreational sailors, such as cruising, one design racing, day sailing, and handicap racing. This sailboat is for all ages and the best way for young sailors to learn responsibility, build their confidence in handling a keelboat, and develop the management skills needed to com compete successfully as a team. Uh, I probably couldn't agree more with that, frankly. Um, these are these are fast, fun little boats, and you really get a sense of sailing a keelboat. They're so a uh, keelboat, blah, blah, keel boat. They are very, very responsive. It's like a little race car around the course. Um, looks to be in really nice shape. I that does look like the original gel coat to me, uh, with some oxidation, uh, but with a little elbow grease. Um, it doesn't, you know, uh, and a bottom paint, you'd be good to go. It doesn't say anything about the sale inventory or anything like that. So a fair number of unknowns. But I reckon at that price point, um, there would be uh, a good inventory on board. And uh, I believe the mass was on her, so uh, on the deck. So I think all the parts are there. Um, let's see, length overall, 24 feet, 20 along the water, beam almost 9 feet, um, sail area displacement 19.77. That's... That's a high number there. She's going to be fast. First built in 1977, 5,400 of these built. Uh, obviously, um, John Stone was designer on these J boats, and this was a very, very popular boat, and still is, I reckon, in in some parts. Um, and uh, and certainly along the coast of Maine, there's still people who race these um, around the buoy stuff, and even some longer um, point to point racing, but. Um, just a fun boat to sail. It's going to be fast uh, relative uh, to other boats at size. And uh, you're going to zip around in this thing. And um, yeah, if you're looking for some fun, this would be the boat. I'm not so sure um, if she would be the best weekender boat um, unless you're into sort of more of the camping um, you know, experience. But you can definitely do it. And uh, a solid little boat. These, I think, some are known for getting some um, some wet decks uh, in the core, uh, but I'm not entirely sure, so don't quote me on that. But nice looking little boat. Uh, here she is under sail, and uh, just uh, yeah, you could have some fun with this. All right, let's uh, let's end it there.